following presentation is for mature audiences only. Who are you? He's a fine man. All hell is broken loose. He's a great broadcaster. He's a very powerful guy. Absolutely brilliant. Feared by men, adored by women. He's a smart boy. It's patriotic. It's no big deal. It's the end of the world. I might as well tell you now. He's a monkey. And how you doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? Welcome in to another edition of The Wild Side with Eric Clark. I am your host, Eric Clark, saying thank you for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with us on the east side of Music City, USA. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit that notification button, smash the like button, but most importantly, help the channel grow by engaging in the comment section. YouTube is all about engagement, and I would like YouTube to help promote this channel. And they need engagement. So all you have to do down in the comment section when you're done watching the video, throw some horns. Throw me a horns emoji down in the comment section. You're more than welcome to comment. Let me know everything you know about the band, etc. But if not anything else, down in the comment section, throw me some horns. If you have a band, song, or a video, something you want me to check out, the best place to get me your suggestion, your one-stop shop for all things Wildside, is over on the Discord server. It's down in the description below. Left-hand side, YouTube reaction requests. Read the pinned message, drop a link, and a brief description. I will get to your video when I can. Today's Discord suggestion is coming from Zitor48. I hope I said that correctly, man. I really hope I did. He said, hey, you, I, I enjoyed what you said about Avantasia last time. Let's get back with him. So today we are checking out Avantasia featuring Amanda Somerville from 2011. This is a track, excuse me, called Farewell. Let me know down below everything I need to know about Avantasia, Amanda Somerville, Farewell, all that stuff. So we're going to check out the track Farewell from the Flying Opera on the Wild Side. Here we go. I don't think they're the Eulalian pipes. I don't think that's what they're called, but they're a kind of wind instrument. There's something about that sound. Maybe it taps into my Irish blood. I don't know, man, but there's something about that tone. Maybe it's because I love Last of the Mohicans so much. I don't know, but I love that sound in a metal song. I just had to say that, sorry. It's perfect. It just sets a great atmosphere, doesn't it? It's keyboards, but... Sorry, it sounded like the pipes to me. I know it's key. It sounded like the pipes. Days had come, winters had gone. We gambled like siblings in paradise. I was your knight, holding you tight. As a brother, when I saw you crying eyes, time went by. But we had to say. Children 
Get everybody back. Get everybody back on, on rhythm. That would mess me up. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Just watch the guy in front of you. That is Avantasia, Farewell from the Flying Opera 2011. Is that Vakken? Um, let me know down below everything about the performance because I love these performances, man. When I talk about bands and I, I see their live performances, I focus on three things. I, I, I call it my trinity. I know that's messianic of me to say that. Um, I look at three things. How is the band with the music? How is the band with each other? And how is the crowd with the band? All three of these things add an energy and a weight to this performance. It's something you don't capture in a studio. These additional three energies colliding in the ether during a live performance. The more of these three you can nail, the bigger the performance is going to be. And the first thing I wrote on this song is thick track. This is a thick song right here. This is a very thick song in its tone, atmosphere, storytelling, vocals, guitar. Everything in this track is thick. It's super thick. But before I get to the music side, I do want to talk about their energy with the band, uh, with the crowd. I, I love that part where the, everybody was kind of off and he was trying to get everybody back on. And then they showed just a real small clip of him just kind of standing there like, okay, I guess you guys aren't going to get on it. Uh, so obviously the crowd was into it. But I do want to say this as a concert goer. Um, get off your man's shoulders. Stop that. Put your phone down and get off your man's shoulders. You're, you're blocking someone. Okay, here he is. But I think for me, what resonates with me is when I find individuals <clears throat> expressing what the entirety is feeling, right? So everybody's reacting and everybody's responding to the energies that's being created in this space here. So you've got the band on the stage and you've got the, the ocean, you got the beach and you got the ocean. Well, somewhere here, the waves are breaking. Okay, that's the energy, is, is right here on the beach. So right where the water meets the sand. You can always, I, I love when you get these little shots. Right here, I want you to watch this guy. He's wearing a white cowboy hat and a red shirt. Just watch him. That little 10 frames of the video this guy 
was completely expressing what everybody was feeling. And yet it comes through his individual unique connection to the overall composition that's happening in front of him. Because every one of those people are reacting for a different reason, but it's coalescing in that ether. And it's creating this added energy. Now, when you look at the band and themselves, you saw it through the performance, interacting with each other, smiling, having a great time. You can hear joy. You can hear happiness. You can hear a smile. I tell people that, and I've been telling people this since I've been working on a microphone. On a telephone, you can hear a smile. If you smile when you speak to people over the phone, it carries a different sound has a different tone to it there's a brightness to your smile that is carried through your sound same thing here there's an energy that 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 they're giving off that is coming through with each other and that comes through to the audience so you get into it because you're standing there watching them get into it and it's kind of like this game of double dutch where it's like i don't know how to do double dutch but suddenly i'm playing double dutch you can't help but to get drawn in to the track. And then you see the band's um, the band's comfort level and natural disposition when performing the piece that they enjoy that as well. So they love the music that they're making, they love performing with each other, and they love performing in front of you. And you can feel and hear all of that. Now, as for the song itself, I, I mentioned before, it's a very thick track. It's thick in its composition. It's thick in its theme. It's thick in its atmosphere. There's a depth and a, and a, and while also a depth, there's a brightness to it as well. So I, I, I wrote down progressive fantasy metal. This is one of those things where you don't put it. I only wrote those words down, only wrote the words down so that I was able to talk about what elements of it are. So the lyrics are fantasy. The lyrics are fantastical. The, the, the attitude of the song, the, the structure of the song, the idea of the song is progressive. Not everything, you know, when people say prog metal or prog or progressive, they always think of like a Hammond B3 organ and it has to have this certain... No, 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 there's progressive blues, progressive psychedelic. There's all kinds of stuff. Progressive is just how it's put together. This is a great progressive metal song. It is. It it tells a great story. It carries the composition through a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's composed properly. It's another sign of progressive music is the composition of the song itself. And you can also tell because of how things change within the track there they change progressively but everything really for me in this track revolves around that lead singer's vocals wow wow that's the highlight of that track for me that guy's vocals were bruce dickinson-esque that's the only word i wrote down for that guy's vocals is medieval and i don't mean medieval as you know um the guy following Monty Python singing songs. That's not what I'm saying. When I say medieval, I mean, it's the word I'm looking for, um, imposing. There's a gothic imposition to his vocals. There's so much depth to his vocal tone. Like when he hits a note... So a lot of times when you hear people sing live, you'll hear them do what I call ramp. I know there's words for it, but I'm not a vocal coach, so I don't really know what the technical terminology is. But a lot of times you'll hear people run into their vocals when they're singing live because they're active. They're, they're, there's no second takes. There's no let's do it again. So you, you've got to be in that moment. In a studio, you're standing in an isolation booth and you're singing into your microphone. Whereas live, you're moving around. Even walking back and forth on the stage, it's going to create a breathing difference than in the studio. So when people sing live, sometimes you'll hear them ramp. Uh They'll lead into, (coughs) excuse me, because they're, they're getting their breath or they'll drop at the end because they're running out of breath. Yeah, 
kind of a thing, and they'll, they'll drop a couple of letters on the last word of the verse. This guy, if you, if you pull up his wave, if I pull up his vocal wave and isolate his vocal wave, it's going to be solid the whole way through. There's not going to be, I'm not going to have to adjust anything or process anything. His vocals are super, super thick. And they're, they're, high, they're high shine, they're high gloss as well. So there's a, there's a popping brightness to his vocals, while at the same time, they're carrying that heft of imposing, impending, whatever you want to call it. You know, for, there's a ferocity there. But in his ferocity are harmony. So it makes it very unique. Uh, it was a very unique track. I like that. That was a good song. Uh, and her vocals as well, Amanda Somerville. What her vocals did, they added this. Okay, so if you watch a TV, TVs have this thing now called a backlight. That's her vocals here. While, yes, she did take lead in some of these verses, her vocals are this are an aura around his solidified tone. And they mix so well. Perfect harmonies, man. Just great harmonies there. And again, it's got a good bounce to it. It's got a great flow. Everything has its place. There's not too much of anything. And that guitar solo was just straight Steve Vai. Uh, you know, that's, again, you know, I, I the 80s and 90s were the, there was like this four-year period of guitar virtuosity where everybody had to lay the licks, so to speak. And sometimes they would go a little too much. The good guitar players know exactly how much to put in there. And he did a perfect job. It was perfect, man. It was the perfect time for a solo, and it was the perfect solo at the perfect time. So thank you very much, Zator48. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Aventasia featuring Amanda Somerville with Farewell from 2011. Again, I, I look like I saw a Vakken thing over there, but I, I'm probably mistaken. Let me know down below everything I need to know. And of course, most importantly, one of the most common comments I get in my comment section, I really have to focus when I say that, is your channel should have more subscribers. Well, YouTube would put me in their algorithm and promote my channel more if I got more engagement. That's what it's all about. It's not about likes. It's not about subscribers or anything like that. It's about engagement. The more engagement I can get in a video, that tells YouTube, hey, more people want to see this. And all you have to do, we're kind of cheesing the algorithm here. You don't have to write a thesis. You don't have to do anything other than throw some horns. Just in a horns emoji down there in the comment section. You can fill me in with everything you know about the band, the song, the show, everything. That's great. But if not anything else, when you're done watching the video, throw a horns emoji down in the comment section. That will tell YouTube, hey, man, help this channel out. We recently cracked the 20,000 subscriber mark. I'd like to get us to 50,000 subscribers. But I need you to help me with that. If you, like Zator48, have a suggestion for a band, song, or a video, get over to the Discord server linked in the description. Left-hand side, YouTube reaction requests. Read the pinned message. Drop a link, a brief description. I will get to it when I can. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with us on the rainy east side of Nashville, Tennessee. Make sure you're looking out for each other. Make sure you're looking out for your neighbor. Try to do at least one good thing a day. I am Eric Clark, and this is The Wild Side.